What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a newly released Ryzen powered mini PC from Chewy known as the Larkbox X. Now in the past we've taken a look at the original Larkbox and the Larkbox Pro. Those were very small, palm sized 4K mini PCs powered by Intel CPUs. But this should be packing a lot more power. Now it's definitely not as small as the original Larkbox or the Larkbox Pro, but this is actually using a Ryzen 7 3700U APU along with Vega 10 graphics built in. So when it comes down to it, using this as an everyday desktop or a little emulation system in light gaming, we should get some really good performance. But remember, this is a third generation Ryzen APU. We've seen the 4000 and the 5000 series mini PCs being released recently. Now right out of the box, I have seen pictures of this and I'm a big fan of the design. I really do love the way this looks. That two-tone really sets it off. Round back, we've got dual gigabit Ethernet. A lot of USB on here. I mean, as I.O. goes on these mini PCs, we've got plenty of it for what we have here. Inside of the box, you're going to get a 65 watt power supply, a VESA mount, and the mini PC itself. Taking a look at the I.O. up front here, we have two full-size USB 3.0 ports. We also have USB Type-C, which is 3.0, and it does support Quick Charge, or PD. On each side, there's not much going on here. I thought there'd be a little ventilation, but uh, everything's really happening around back here. We've got that big vent for the CPU cooler. Power in, dual gigabit Ethernet, full-size HDMI, full-size DisplayPort, and two more USB 3.0 ports. When it comes to upgradability, there's not much we can do here except for the M.2 SSD and the RAM. This comes with 8GB of RAM, it's running in dual channel, but we can go all the way up to 32, and we can set up basically any M.2 SSD we want in this unit, but it doesn't have the option for a 2.5 inch drive, which is a little disappointing. Taking a look at the specs of this mini PC, for the CPU we get the Ryzen 7 3700U. 4 cores, 8 threads, base clock of 2.3GHz with a boost up to 4.0. By the way, this APU out of the box is running at 25 watts, but we can actually change it from the BIOS or using a third-party application. When it comes to the GPU, the 3700U actually has Radeon Vega 10 graphics built in, up to 1400 MHz, 8GB of DDR4, unfortunately it's only running at 2667 MHz. We do get that user replaceable 256GB M.2 SSD. It also has AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.2 built in, and it's capable of running Windows or Linux. I have Windows 10 installed on mine, so that's what we're going to be testing with in this video. But before we move over to testing, I did want to give you a look at the BIOS here, because upping the TDP on these APUs really helps out. Alright, so first things first. With this little mini PC, out of the box, this APU is running at 25 watts. A lot of my regular viewers already know that if we put more wattage into these little APUs, we can get much better performance out of them. It'll keep the CPU clock up, and especially the GPU clock. From the BIOS, if we head to Advanced, and we go to AMD CBS, NBIO, you can see that the system configuration is set at 25 watts. It does work great as a little desktop, but it is lacking at 25 watts. From here, we can go all the way up to 54. You can also change this using a third-party application like AMD Tuning Utility. Done a full video on it if you want to check that out. Goes over how to use it. It's a really simple process. In this video, I'm going to be running this at 35 watts instead of 25. The built-in cooler here can definitely handle 35 watts, and it will up the performance on this little setup. Alright, so I've got everything up and running, I've updated the drivers, I've installed some games and some emulators, and overall, like it sits right now, remember we're at 35 watts, that's what I have it set at in the BIOS, this is a great little desktop. Web browsing, email checking, you want to do some 1080p video editing, some photo editing, we have more than enough power for your everyday needs like that. Now what I'm really worried about with the 3700U, even running at 35 watts, is gaming and emulation. But before we jump over there, I did want to test out a little bit of 4K video playback, and I also ran some benchmarks. Alright, so here we are over at YouTube. I'm using Wi-Fi right now, connected to my 5 GHz network. 4K, 60, stats for nerds on screen. This is a 1080p monitor, so our viewpoint is only at 1080p, but this is a 4K 60 video. And this thing can handle 4K really, really well. On the initial load-in, we did have a few drop frames, but you should definitely be good to go streaming 4K video content or playing it natively from an external drive or internal. The next thing I wanted to take a look at was just a few benchmarks I ran. First up, we've got Geekbench 5, and remember we're at 35 watts with this unit from the BIOS. 
Single core, 884. Multi, 3185. Not bad for being a third gen Ryzen Mobile APU. Next up, we have 3D Mark Wildlife. This is a Vulcan benchmark for that built in Vega 10 GPU. Total score here, 5,168. And the final benchmark I ran was Night Raid, coming in with a 9,046. So these are synthetic benchmarks, and so far, I mean, it's not looking top notch, but I still want to see how this thing can handle real world gaming. First up, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, 720p, low. I was really hoping we could get a super steady 60 out of it, but when there's lots of particles on screen, you will see a dip down. It's not horribly bad, and this would definitely be playable. You know, single player, I wouldn't go to a competition with something like this. But it is working, as you can see. Next up, we have the Art of a Rally, 1080p, medium settings. I had a good idea that this would work well on this machine, and we could probably jack these settings up to high and just lock that V-Sync to 60. Moving over to CSGO, 720p, low, we actually got an average of 67 FPS. I thought we'd get a little more out of it, but when it comes down to it, we're just not getting enough wattage to that iGPU to keep the clocks up. Now it's time to move over to a little bit of emulation. Here's PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP, DirectX 11 backend, Midnight Club Dub Edition, which is a hard one to emulate. We're running at full speed and we have it set to 5x. So PSP on this little machine is good to go, even with the harder to emulate stuff. I figured I'd go ahead and throw a little Dreamcast emulation in here using ReDream, because I know I'll have some people asking about it. We're at 1440p, and as long as the game's compatible with the emulator, you shouldn't have any issues running it. Next up, we've got some GameCube using the Dolphin emulator. I'm set to 1440p, and one of my favorite ones to test here, Automotalista, using the DirectX 11 back end. Every once in a while, I do see it dip down and fluctuate between 59 and 60, but that's something you would never notice unless you had a frame counter on screen. GameCube and Wii emulation using the Dolphin emulator works amazingly with this little PC. And finally, for emulation, we have PS2 using PCSX2. Here's Soul Calibur 3, it's a harder game to emulate, and right now I'm at the native resolution using DirectX 11. If I try to take it up to 720p, I get a ton of dips on it, but there are games that are going to be playable even at 1080p on this machine. So there was one last thing I wanted to do here. This machine does have more potential than it's putting out in its stock form factor, but you know, given the limited amount of RAM and RAM speed for that built-in iGPU, it's not working at its full potential. Plus, we have the issue of the wattage on that APU. So what I have here is Forza Horizon 5. This was one I couldn't play with the stock amount of RAM. We only had 8 gigs and it was just maxing it out. Wasn't getting a great frame rate whatsoever. So what I did was add 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running in dual channel, but it's running at 3200 megahertz, and now I have that APU running at 45 watts. 720p, low, we can actually get an average of 68 FPS out of Forza Horizon 5, which isn't bad for a mini PC. Since I'm running this at 45 to 50 watts, I did pull the bottom off the unit and set it up on its side, because at 45 watts, this thing can thermal throttle when it's just sitting flat on the desk, but you know, I got a little more airflow coming in here, and performance is really great for the 3700U, but I've got that wattage way up and I have much faster RAM added to this unit. So it does have potential, but you will need to do a little bit of tweaking. So in the end, the Chewy Larkbox X does perform really well for what kind of APU we have in here, but there are more powerful mini PCs on the market. This is coming in at $399 over on Amazon right now, and if you're looking for a desktop replacement and you're not going to do a lot of hardcore gaming on it, then this one could definitely be for you. But if you're looking for a little more GPU power for gaming, I would go with something with the Ryzen 4000 series or the 5000 series. I've done a lot of videos on them, and the performance is definitely up when it comes to the 4000 and 5000 series, and it really comes down to that built-in iGPU and much faster RAM just right out of the box. But that's it for this one. If there's anything else you want to see running on this little mini PC, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.